Hey guys, so I have a much requested video guide for you today. It's going to show you how to change the frame rate of your video clips so that you can edit with them in your sequences. A bunch of you have had questions like, how do I check the frame rate of my clip? How do I check and make sure that I can use it in my video? And I'm going to show you a really simple surefire solution. There's something called a variable frame rate, which is um, basically... If you tell a program to record at 60 FPS, depending on your computer performance, it may dip below and actually go above 60 FPS during the recording, but the video software will only read it as 60 FPS because that's what's in the data. This is what causes the video syncing problems, like in the video that I uploaded my last guide with. Um, that clip had a variable frame rate issue. So because of that, you want to conform these clips using a program like Handbrake or MPEG Stream Clip to change that into a constant frame rate. So today I'm going to show you how to check the frame rate of your clip and how to change it to your desired frame rate. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your video clip with a program called QuickTime Player. If you don't have that, you can also download VLC. And then the first thing you're going to do is, let me just make this a little bit smaller. Um, you're going to hit Control I if you're on a PC and if you're on a Mac, it's going to be Command I. And basically that's just going to prompt you with a bunch of information on the clip. So it's telling you the format, it's going to tell you the, uh, the frames per second, your your resolution, all that, that fancy jazz. So once you get that open, check. And so this file is 60 FPS. Now this is fine if I know that this is a constant frame rate, but if I'm not sure about that, I would throw it through MPEG Stream Clip anyway. Um, the reason why you want to check the frames per second of this is also because if you want to conform it, you want to make sure that you're using one of the, you know, three or four most used frame rates. So for example, um, 23.976 is very, is very popular. 29.97 is also very popular. And 59.94 is another really big one. Um, if you don't have any of those, you can also use 60, but you want to try to conform it to the closest, most used frame rate. Or you can also just conform it to whatever project you're working in. So let's just say I wanted to use a 60 clip and a 23976. Nothing's stopping me from conforming it to 29. But if you haven't made a project yet, I would conform it to whatever the closest, most popular frame rate is, just so that it's easier for you to use it in the project and use other clips in the future. So once you find out the frame rate of your clip, we're going to go and open up MPEG Stream Clip. Now, really quick, I've downloaded this program a million times and I've never gotten a virus, but always use protection, ha, huh, when you're downloading off the internet. So just be safe. Make sure you're going on the proper website. I'll link where I downloaded from, which is the website from MPEG Stream Clip, like that company itself. But always make sure you exercise caution. Now, the first step is to, I like to create a batch list. So if you hit Control B, or you just go to List, Batch List, um, you basically get this prompt where you can add multiple clips and have them save somewhere uh, so that you don't have to do one by one. First, hit Add Files, choose the file. So right now I have it on my desktop, so I'm going to choose that file. You want to export to QuickTime, hit OK. Um, and then I would make another folder in that same location and write, I, I like to name it conformed. So hold on, can I rename it? Oh, that messed up. But regardless, I would make a new folder and then just select that as your destination. So once you get to this, um, I would copy the settings that I have here. Basically everything here is what you're going to be using. You would select this if you're working in a 1080i format, but you're probably not going to because it's more, it's more common to be editing in like a 1080p, which is progressive versus interla interlaced. If you know what that means, then obviously you'll be toggling that on or off. But if you don't know what that means, it honestly isn't a big deal. You're probably recording in progressive anyway. Everything here will stay the same unless you are trying to conform to a different frame rate. So let's just say you wanted to change your clip to 23.976. Just enter that in there. Um, you can also do 29.97. You do 59.94. Whatever you want to do. But I want to make my clip 60 frames per second. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can also hit presets right here and hit, I think, save. And then you can choose what you want to save it as. Um, so yeah, you can just do that and you can load it every single time like I did. So once you get to this step and you're all done, making sure that all the options are correct, hit to batch and it's going to add it to the queue. So you can do this multiple times. Um, you can add while it's still going. Do whatever you need to do, get all your clips set up and then just hit go. And then it's going to give you another prompt and it's going to encode it. Now this is a really short clip, so it's going to go really fast, but usually not always. It depends on how strong your computer is. If it's an hour long clip, it may take about an hour to conform. Some people it's going to be less if you have a super duper computer and some people it might be more. And it also depends on what frame rate you're using because that will make a difference on the toll on your computer. 
So that's how you can form that clip into a new frame rate. And like I said earlier, you can go from any frame rate so you can go from 60 to 23,976 and you can go the opposite way. It doesn't matter. The reason why I suggested you check what frame rate your actual clip is, is because it is better to try to stick as true to the clip as possible. So if I recorded in 60 frames per second, I would want to edit in a project with 60 frames per second. Obviously that can't be helped if maybe you're sourcing footage. So like, let's just say you recorded in 23976 and you wanted to grab a YouTube video that was 29, you're going to have to conform the 29 down to the 23976 before you can put it into the project. Um, and one other thing too, uh, this is really for you folks that aren't familiar with how frame rate frame rates actually work excuse me i can't speak today um there is a difference between 2997 and 30. there is a difference between 5994 and 60. it may not sound like a lot but that actually is a really big difference it's almost a full frame per second and that's why videos get more and more out of sync so the video that I showed in the example that I showed in my last guide, that's what happened is because it was reading it as a 59 file, but my file itself was a 60 file. So I had to pretty much trick hit film into thinking it was something else. But regardless, hope this video guide helped out. I know you guys have been requesting this. Um, it's not really the highest quality guide I could have made, but I really want to get it out because I've got a lot of questions about it. I've got like 60 comments on that video or whatever it is, and a lot of you needed help. So hopefully this helps you out. If you still have more questions, please feel free to write another comment. Let me know if you need something and I'll make another guide on it. I do this for a living. I actually use this program all the time at work. And so um, I'm a media manager. So to me, this is like really simple. Hopefully I explained it in a good enough way to help you guys and maybe don't have the experience that I have. And let me know if there's anything else that you want to request from me. So thank you and good luck.